Well, you got to laugh. Um, so this will be the start of something interesting. Got a package in the mail, and when I went to check the mail on Sunday, I was like, crap, I don't remember ordering anything. So you know, what, what the heck could that be? So I picked up the package, and it was kind of heavy, and I'm like, crap, I really don't know what this is. Um, until I started to open it, and then I realized, oh, yeah. Uh, so this is, I don't know, maybe total bull crap, but I saw it and it was so ridiculous, I had to give it a shot. The Coffee Alive, drum roll, stainless steel shot ball. Um, so this is one of those things, I don't know if you've seen the videos, uh, where you put this in the freezer, and then you put it over your shot, and then the espresso runs over the, the freezing cold ball, and this is supposed to help keep some of the volatile compounds um, from fleeing off into the atmosphere, right? Uh, that's the, the theory behind what the heck this is, right? It is supposed to help um, keep more in the coffee uh, whenever you're pulling an espresso shot. Now, I saw it and I thought, Man, there ain't no way, um, but we'll see. I got one. Uh, I actually bought one for a buddy uh, for Christmas. Just, you know, we both kind of get into espresso, so we'll see if he thinks it's worth anything. So what the instructions say, well, they say tag us on social and we will repost it. That's the biggest text on here, so we can see. I mean, look, that is the big driver, right? I saw this stupid thing on a TikTok or video Instagram thing or something on Reddit that somebody had used it. Um, instructions, good Lord, they saved money on font, didn't they? Yeah, I mean, pretty straightforward. It says to wash it, then we hang it in the freezer. And so that's why it's got this little open end so you can like hang it from a rack in the freezer and then you run your shot over it. Uh, then you clean it again and refreeze it and enjoy my coffee with more flavors. Exclamation point, flavors spelled uh, the British style there. Uh, company out of Canada, uh, at least, you know, is the, the company Coffee Alive. Yeah, so they're calling this the blanching technique, and it is designed to, uh, to keep some of the flavors from floating off into the uh, the ether. So, ah, God, I don't know. It, it's got to be bull crap, right? I mean, there's just no way. But, uh, I mean, hell, let's give it a shot. All right, time for a taste test. Um, so this is four different cups and I'll, I'll tell you about what's going on. Um, the first one is just a regular shot into a room temperature cup. And the last one is the ball shot, right? The, uh, the frozen ball. These two I'll talk about in just a second, but first um, I do wanna talk about, look, this taste test, it's very subjective. I'm just doing one at each. And there is no way to do this test in a perfectly consistent manner where everything is exactly the same, except for uh, the treatment, which is, you know, using the ball on this one. Um, so all that to say is I've done my best, and each one of these was pulled um, with basically the same input weight within like a tenth or two of a gram, the same output, again, within a gram. Um, and I've done one extra step that's very important for this particular test, which is I've tried to let them reach the same temperature. Now, this one I just got done pulling, and the ball shot, about 90 degrees Fahrenheit, is roughly where it comes out. So it's only been sitting for a minute. Regular shot is currently about 88, 87 degrees. And this one, a little warmer, 93, 94. And then this one, 87. So you can see I, I've really tried to get them all close to the same temperature because uh, whenever I taste them, the temperature in your mouth can actually change the way things taste. The actual temperature of the liquid can taste different, even if it, it's chemically exactly the same. Um, so the next thing 
is to see whether I can really measure any difference in extraction. Um, I don't really expect to see much difference here. Um, there's no reason to believe that extraction would be any different in this test. Um, and the reason is, is like, if this thing is cooling, the, the flavors that it's saving are basically, they got to be volatile. Um, and the, the measurement here is for total dissolved solids. And you're not going to save solids because solids aren't going to evaporate. But um, we're going to do the test anyway, just to make sure. And my recipe for these is probably pretty strong. So 10.86% there. All right, so we got 11.08 for the second one, 10.86 for the third one. So that's exactly the same as the first. And 10.75 for the last one. So uh, very minor deviations in extraction. Uh, two of them were exactly the same. This one's a tenth of a percent lower. Uh, this one may be 0.15 higher so not a huge spread and again based on kind of my prior assumptions here i'm not really surprised that i didn't measure that much difference because um, ultimately uh, there really shouldn't be uh, there's no reason to expect that your extraction would be different in a measurable tds setting um, however another thing we might want to test acidity and so uh, this is electronic ph tester and i'm going to also test uh, the acidity of each one of these, because that maybe could change um, how acidic it comes out. Now, uh, this pH tester I've got, it comes with calibrations. I have already calibrated it um, and checked, so it's reading well. So one last check, uh, pH-wise, uh, just some tap water here, measuring right at just bang on seven. So let's put it in here. You're supposed to kind of stir it. Looks like I'm reading about pH of five. Also getting a pH five. Also looking like five. Then the last one, five. Okay, so um, within the realms of my ability to measure this stuff, so far I cannot measure a difference really in any of these. Again, slight variations in TDS is to be expected. There is shot to shot variance. Um, but again, two of these measure the exact same, and the others, one's a little higher, one's a little lower. Um, if anything, uh, you know, does the ball help extract more? Will it measure the lowest extraction? So um, the last thing is, of course, the subjective taste test. We've got them all pretty much normalized on temperature at this point. Again, we're still reading 80, low 80s, 81, 82, looking at 83, 80, 81. All right, so we're just within a few degrees of each other. Okay, so now time for the taste test. So I'm going to bring uh, my tap water back in cleanse the palate. Let's see if these taste any different to me. Now, man, look, these are subjective. I'm not doing this blind, but listen, uh, whenever you see those people doing blind taste tests on the internet and they're wearing blindfolds and they're mixing things up in front of themselves, uh, it's a waste of time because look, if they didn't want it to be blind, it doesn't have to be. You have to trust them to begin with. So again, unless there's like rigorous testing, the whole blind testing on the internet's just kind of a, I don't know, it's a meme. Uh, so I'm not doing this blind because, well, I can't, right? I couldn't prove to you that it's blind anyway. Um, but let's go ahead and give it a shot. All right. A little bit of bitterness to me. Room temperature um, espresso always kind of tastes a little more bitter than warm espresso. All right. I'm going to go straight to the ball shot. Is it more bitter? Because um, Whenever I've been doing these shots, it gives me the impression of it being more bitter. Um, right now, in a side-by-side -side context, you know, it might have just a bit more of a sour tilt to its flavor. You know, some might interpret that as a, a bit more on the of the kind of fresh or more citrusy side of things. However, that could also be in my head. I mean, it's so small. They taste almost identical. So let me taste these others and see if I can spot any difference. Uh, again, I, it's, it's really hard to tell much of a difference between these. Yeah, um, my overall determination is these are all the same. Um, you know, I've gone back and forth. I've done water palette versus direct back to back. And uh, and to me, these all taste the same. Um, 
to, there's no distinctive difference that I can really say I can definitely taste a difference. Um, you know, I, I would say as far as the taste testing aspect of these types of shots, uh, you, you almost have to do it yourself and see whether you can tell a difference. Cause I honestly, I can't, I cannot tell any difference in any of these. And so, um, again, this was the, the shot with the steel ball. This was just a regular shot. I can't tell any difference. Um, these two, this was pulled with a refrigerated cup. And this one was with a cup that had been in the freezer. Because one of the things about the ball is that even if this thing works, um, you, you got to buy the ball. And it, all it's doing is just chilling the coffee as it's extracted. So I wanted to know, well, what's the difference, you know, running the coffee over a steel ball versus just running it into a chilled cup. And to me, well, there's not one. So if you're interested in seeing, can you tell any difference in the flavor rather than just trusting me, use a refrigerated cup or a frozen cup and check for yourself. Because to me, um, that's a good way to simulate this without spending your money on an accessory uh, that you may not actually need. Because, you know, here's where I'm going to try to start summarizing my thoughts on all this. So overall, um, flavor-wise, I can't tell a the difference. They measured all the exact same pH level. Um, the total dissolved solids was, again, pretty much to me within variance. So no distinctive uh, real big difference there, which is to say, why would you pay 20 something bucks for this thing? Um, cause this does have some flaws. Um, it really only works with a bottomless portafilter, a spouted portafilter kind of not really, it's not going to work cause your coffee is going to hit each side at best. Um, so I don't know, you know, it does cost money. Um, it feels to me like this thing is living on visuals, right? I mean, it looks cool in the shots to see the coffee, you know, that espresso going over that thing. Uh, but I wouldn't spend my money on this without running it through the chilled cup test um, because you might not be able to tell a difference at all. Number two, even if this thing works, um, there's no guarantee that you'll like the flavor. It might change the flavor, but that doesn't mean you're going to like it. Because when you think about what are the flavors that this could possibly be adding back into your coffee, um, volatile kind of aromatic chemicals. And just because something smells good does not mean that you're going to like the taste of it, right? I mean, perfume doesn't taste good, but it does smell good. Um, and so the chemicals that are more volatile may not be good flavors, right? There's there's no guarantee that even if those things are being preserved, and to my palate and to my tests, probably not, um, there's still no guarantee that you like it. So do a cold cup test, do a frozen cup test, see that if that you know, makes a difference. And always when you do this, you really do have to make sure that your temperatures of what you're tasting are the same because your palate can change based on the temperature of the food or the beverage uh, that you're consuming. Um, and so to me, this is not really necessarily a good investment. And let me, you know, talk about a couple other things here with this thing. Um, each one of these cost 20, 25 bucks, and then you've got one. And if you want to use it again, you got to put it back in the freezer and wait for it to chill out. And that may take you an hour or two for this thing to get back to that freezer temperature. What if you want to make two of these, right? One for you, one for somebody else. Well, you got to have two of them. Um, to me, even if you like the coffee that that thing produces and you can tell the difference in the flavor, I'd just freeze some cups because you can freeze four of them and make up to four shots. Boom, 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 boom. No problem. Whereas you don't have to invest, you know, a hundred bucks into these things um, just to make a few shots. So I don't know that this thing is worth it to me. Well, I, I do know it's not. This thing to me is a total dud. I don't really think it does anything. Um, I can't tell any difference. I, I'm not going to try to force that on you and tell you you're dumb if you use one, because maybe you can tell, but I sure can't, um, nor can I really measure a big difference. 
Um, if anything, it looks like it lowers extraction, which doesn't make any sense because, again, uh, the extraction is all after the fact, right? I mean, the shot's been pulled by the time it hits this. So, again, I don't know about the extraction stuff anyway, but it costs money. Um, it just it doesn't seem to do anything. I just can't tell that it does anything at all. Um, so that's my opinion on it. I think that it looks cool in pictures and videos on the internet, and that's why you're seeing these things around. Um, the reviews that I've seen have all been by people that seem to either have been given them or are selling them, right? I mean, or uh, frankly, just the reviews that they don't seem that rigorous. I don't know. That's my opinion. I think it's bullcrap. <laughs> I think that's, I'm trying to not say that, but to me, it's just bullcrap. I can't tell the difference. So I'm going to stop there because I've been rambling way too much on this thing. Uh, but there you go. If you got any feedback, uh, feel free to leave it in a comment down below. Thanks.